You like the truck, man? It's the Rivian, it's electric. Yeah, I think. All right, All right. see ya. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was perfect. Hey everybody, I'm Ethan, and today I'm very excited to be reviewing the Rivian R1T, next on Now Let's Review. So if you've been watching Now You Know It All, you know that we've had this for a while. This is, of course, the long-awaited and anticipated Rivian R1T. We're gonna go over all the features and specs, take it for a drive, and see how we like it. So first up and perhaps most impressive about this truck is just the sheer amount of power it has. This truck has four motors, one for each wheel, and it has a total of 835 horsepower and 908 foot-pounds of torque. And all that power is definitely necessary because this truck weighs 7,150 pounds. This is an absolute beast of a truck. That power and torque also helps with the towing. This truck has a towing capacity of 11,000 pounds. Now in the little bit of testing we did when it comes to towing, we actually towed 13,000 pounds, so 2,000 pounds over the stated weight limit, and it actually handled it really well. So I think that's kind of a conservative estimate. Now this truck has a few drive modes, one of which is conserve, and in that mode, you can get up to 300 miles of range out of this truck. So that is a very reasonable range considering the size and weight of this truck and the amount of power it uses. And now on this particular truck, we do have the off-road tires. If we got the road tires, you could get up to 315 miles, so a little bit more. Now the fastest charging speed we've gotten out of this is about 218 kilowatts, and you can charge from 10% to 80% in 42 minutes. So it's actually a pretty quick charge. So this particular truck has a battery capacity of 135 kilowatt hours. Now they were gonna make a lower capacity version, but they've kind of scrapped that, and there is going to be a higher capacity version coming soon. Now this is the launch edition and as spec, it cost us $78,000, but if you wanted to buy one today with these same specs, it would be around $90,000. So the price has increased significantly since it was launched. The thing that makes this truck really neat is all the features it has, especially this one right here. This truck is probably best known for this. This is the gear tunnel. It goes all the way through. You can open it on the other side. You can use this to store all kinds of equipment that you don't want to put inside the truck or if your bed is full, you have more room here. There's also an access from the interior that you can go through the back seat and reach stuff in the gear tunnel. This can also be used as a step if you need to get something off the roof, put something on the roof because there are roof rack mounts here, or if you wanna get into the bed and access anything that you have in there. These do have a weight limit of 250 pounds each, so should be able to accommodate a pretty good variety of people. Coming around to the back here, we do have another very cool feature, which is the built-in tonneau cover. So as you can see, it will automatically slide all the way in. These are aluminum panels that make up the tonneau cover. There's a button to open the tailgate once you do. It's a soft open, and underneath the bed, if you open this up, you have storage or a spare tire. In this particular truck, we have opted for the storage. In the back here, you have 1500 watt outlets. There's two of them right here. And here, there's also a built-in air compressor that you can use to pump up either your tires or anything else that you might need to inflate. Set your PSI and turn it on here. Very, very neat that that is built in. Is that not closed? And apparently, the, the cover doesn't close all the way. So as you just saw, I locked the truck and the door handles went into the truck nice and flush. But if I unlock it, they all pop out, the mirrors unfold. So on the sides of the bed here, you have mounts for the cargo bars, which you can simply clamp on and then use to mount other bike racks or just to secure anything in the bed. Open this up with the remote and then you have a self-opening frunk if you open up here, you have additional storage underneath. So underneath here, you have the gear guard cable. And also this is the mobile charger, nice and easy to store in here as well. So if you're throwing a party and you wanna show off your truck as well, you can fill this whole thing with ice and there is a drain right here. Then to close this, because it is self-closing and opening, you can either press on the fob or there's a button underneath here to close the frunk as well. So this is the gear guard cable that the truck comes with. You put one into here, it locks in and then you can loop this cable around anything you wanna secure in the back. Put this one into this side as well, and then that's locked in place and it's not gonna go anywhere. Not only is GearGuard a uh, cable, a physical thing with the cable, it also uses the truck's cameras to record what is going on. And in a little bit, we're gonna show you what that GearGuard footage looks like. And as you can see, there are also these lights here on both sides of the bed. The wheel wells are actually pretty minimal in the bed here. They don't take up a lot of space. So closed, this is a 54 inch bed, which is on the small side for pickup trucks. You can put up to 1,760 pounds of payload in the back. So moving on to the interior of the truck, 
This is a really, really nice, high quality interior. This is all vegan leather. The whole interior is soft touch where it should be. Very high quality. It's got Alcantara headliner here. The seats in here are very comfortable. They have a good amount of bolstering. The headroom is pretty good, actually. You do have a panoramic sunroof. I really like the shape of the steering wheel. It's very simple. A lot of these newer cars have these crazy looking wild steering wheels. This is very simple and refined. I like it. So on this screen here, you can see obviously your drive mode. This also shows your speedometer. You've got a range bar here and it also tells you how many miles left. You also have heated and cooled seats. This does have a heated steering wheel. So in the winters, this will be not freezing cold. Go to your navigation here. You can see the map. So sometimes it takes a while to load, but overall it's a pretty detailed map. It, the screen is actually quite responsive, so that's nice. Spotify is integrated into the infotainment, so you can access basically anything as long as your account is connected. With your foot on the brake, you can change all these settings. We can go ride soft to stiff. I'm not going to change it right now. You can change between standard regen braking and high regen braking, and you can change the stability from on to reduced or off. So there's five different drive modes here. You have all-purpose, sport, conserve, off-road, and towing. Here you have controls for basically most of the truck. You can turn on or off the cabin lights. You can change the brightness of the display. You can set it to auto, day, or night mode. If we go here, we have the gear guard where we can review all the recordings that have been taken when gear guard is activated. So gear guard is not only just the physical cable that we showed you earlier, it is also a security system. So when someone comes close to this truck, turns on all the cameras around and can record what has happened. So if someone hits your car or tries to break into it, you have video recordings of that happening. So if you go to this camera window, you can see the top down view. We can also see what's in front of us. And if I hit this, what's behind us, great for backing up. So you can see here that the climate control is very intuitive. You basically just touch and drag where you want. The vents are here and on the sides all the way over here. There is no glove box, so storage is kind of atypical for a car. You do have a center console here with a very, very deep pocket. I can actually get basically elbow deep into the center console. Lots of storage there. You have a big platform up front here that you can put things to. And then down below the driver's seat, there's a pocket that folds out from the seat where you could put probably something the size of about a cell phone or a wallet. Moving over to the back, rear seats are also quite comfortable and there's a lot of leg room. Now I'm only 5'9", so I'm on the shorter side, but even for me, there's tons of space. And if you're taller, there's a little less headroom in the back because the sunroof ends and the Alcantara headliner comes down. However, there is still a good amount of space and I think most people could fit relatively comfortably. And underneath the seats, if you open these up, there is additional storage. This is great. You can really pack this truck full of stuff to bring with you. The storage ends in the center seat here. On the other side, it is a subwoofer underneath the seat, but even with just the left and center seat, there is a lot of space. There are 7,776 battery cells in this truck, but the 7,777th is actually right here in this flashlight that is built into the door. How cool is that? Oh, oh, <laughs> it's quite bright actually. And when you put it back in, it will automatically turn off. So in addition to the flashlight, there's also something else you can remove from this car, which is a Bluetooth speaker, which is located under the center console. If you're listening to music in the truck and you take this out, the audio will automatically transfer over to this and then you can walk out and this is connected to your phone. So that is super cool. It's also Rivian branded. Sounds pretty good as well. So the sound system in the r t is a Meridian Elevation. It sounds pretty good. We're not gonna play it because of copyright issues and you can't really just hear the sound through a video. However, the sound is quite good. We have enjoyed blasting music through this quite a bit. You also have a built-in nine band EQ in the settings that you can mess with, as well as changing the soundscape. You can change where the center of the sound kind of meets up through the infotainment. So that's pretty cool. So there are two ways that you can unlock and use the truck. One is this key fob here, which is also a carabiner. That's pretty cool. You can lock, unlock, open the tailgate and open the front with this. There's also a key card that you can use to unlock the truck. There's also a Rivian app that you can get, which you can use to control the climate control, unlock and lock the truck, see the real time location and a couple other features. This has some of the slowest opening windows of any vehicle I've ever been in. That's crazy. So right now we're in the standard ride height, but I'm going to put it into conserve and lower the ride height, which will bring this all the way down to the lowest setting to help maximize efficiency on the road and reduce drag. Now this is it in the lowest setting, but I'm going to put it into off-road and go into the highest setting. Now I wait another 30 seconds. And there's water coming out of the door. So as you can see, this is not very well sealed as there's water pouring out of the door. It was raining yesterday. Um, 
but now we have it in the highest ride height, and this is what I would expect a truck like this that's an adventure vehicle to kind of look like. You got a good amount of clearance between the tire and the wheel well. This looks like it's ready to go off-roading. And the ride height ranges from nine inches at the lowest to 15 inches at the highest, so pretty good range. You can kind of change it based on what you want to be doing with the truck. Blue light just popped up. Alexa. Alexa. Oh, it's Alexa, yeah. okay. This might answer your question. No, it doesn't answer my question. No, why are there so many things happening? There's like eight voices going on. Stop, no, stop, stop. Well, who's still talking? I think I put on NPR too. But how do I turn it off? Alexa, stop the radio. Okay, we're going to try this again. There we go. Now that I understand what the hell is happening, it's not as bad. All right, so... We'll go. The regen brakes in this truck are absurdly strong. Like one pedal driving is taken to a whole new level with this thing. Throttle response in sport mode is very smooth, easy to control. This is a very easy truck to drive. I've driven several other pickup trucks in my lifetime. This drives a lot more like a car than those other trucks did. They all drove like trucks. This truck drives much more like a car. Handling is quite good considering this is a truck. I will say, that the steering is very numb. I don't feel a lot of what's going on in the road through the steering wheel, but it's very direct and concise. So right up here on this road, we're about to approach a pretty tight S turn, and I just wanna see how it behaves going around this. Hopefully the cars in front of us won't slow down too much. But again, I've been impressed with the handling. My biggest complaint though is that it's so numb, I can't feel anything going on in the road through the steering wheel. It feels very robotic, but here we go. We're going around this relatively sharp corner. We're in sport mode. Honestly, impressive. So let's just turn onto this uh, faster road, and we'll just uh, we'll give it some we'll give it some gas. <laughs> yeah, this thing gets up and goes. This is quite a fun uh, quite a fun vehicle to drive, if for nothing else, just because of the straight line performance. And because we're in the stiffest setting, we are getting the most road feel. The suspension is very stiff; it's rocking us around a lot. So I am going to change the ride mode into soft. It does only have soft and stiff. There's not a lot of customization in how it rides. You've got two options. The regen brake sensitivity is quite high. If you just slightly let off the throttle, it starts to slow down a lot. And I am in the standard regen setting. Now there are only two regen settings. There's standard and high. So if I switch it to high, it's so aggressive. It feels like standing on the brakes with this if I fully let off the throttle. It's so touchy actually that when we're going over bumps and my foot is moving on the throttle pedal, that it's actually rocking the car back and forth because the region brakes are kicking in. Handling is very good. Like I said, it's quite responsive. You don't have to do a, a ton of turning like in a lot of trucks to get this thing to turn. We're getting on the highway here. There's no one directly behind us, so we'll kind of point it straight and give it some gas because being able to merge is very important. So ready, set, go. Whoa! <laughs> Holy sh**. Oh my God. And just like that, we're at a restable speed. So, okay. yeah, this uh, th there's no no challenge in getting this thing up to speed. So if I pull down twice here, it puts it into the Rivian version of autopilot. So I can adjust the speed. I'm going to put it at, let's say, 75, a nice cruising speed. So not touching the, the gas, the brakes, or the steering wheel. I don't know. It feels pretty good. I haven't spent a ton of time behind the wheel of a Tesla using actual Tesla autopilot, but... So you just took it out? Oh, really? Yeah. I, did, I barely did anything, though. So interestingly, as I'm using the autopilot, it, um, it wanted me to put my hands on the wheel, and so I did, just very slightly, because in a Tesla, you have to apply a little bit of pressure to the wheel. I did that in this, and it just took it out. So all this actually wants me to do is just have my hands in contact with the wheel, and that's enough to keep it in autopilot. It is doing a good job of staying centered in the lane. I haven't really felt it jerking side to side too much. It's pretty stable. And to take it out of the autopilot or self-driving, you simply put your foot on the brake and that is enough to get it out. As you can see right now, I have the current lane I'm in, the speed and a little bit of the navigation here. But if I hold this button on the left of the steering wheel, then I can go to efficiency. So it shows a little graph of how efficient I've been in the last 15 minutes. So there's three options, it's navigation, tire pressure, or efficiency. I'm not touching the brake pedal at all, and it just brought us all the way to a complete stop. And I felt it actually go into the hold mode, which you can see right here. So as you can see, the hold sign shows up. I'll give it a little bit of throttle just to creep us forward, but I'm going to completely let off the throttle right now, bringing us to a stop. 
and it puts it into hold. So that way if we're on a hill or something, it's gonna keep us in place even without me having to use the brake. This light's about to turn green. Any uh, New Hampshire police or state troopers around us? All right, everybody, here we go. All right, ready? <laughs> and that wasn't even full throttle and that wasn't all the way to 60. That was zero to 40 and that was still faster than probably anything I've ever been in before. This thing really is a monster. She's Louise. Oh, there's a Model Y. We can. Oh, oh, a competitor. The enemy is near us. Ready to destroy this Model Y? I don't know. Can we? The enemy is near. We have the Model Y, and we're at a red light, and we're about to smoke that motherfucker. Green light, please. Here we go. <laughs> wow. I know what it feels like to be in Top Gun. <laughs> oh, sh there's the. Oh my God! It's a very good thing that we did that at that light. Wow. Yeah, there's right there. there's the police. I don't think we broke any laws. That is true. Yeah. Sorry, officer. I just I I was only doing the speed limit. I just got there very quickly. So now, nice, chill, relaxed ride until we're back out of the major populated area. We're gonna make a nice run to Guitar Center and pick up some strings. Let's see how the turning radius is on this. Can I actually make this U-turn? No way in hell am I gonna be able to make this U-turn. So, I'm gonna hold everybody up as I back this giant ass truck around. They're regretting letting me go. Although honestly, considering the trucks I have driven, that turn radius is not too, too bad. So in sport with the low ride height, I would say this is great for just, you know, driving around a, a city like this. The ride is great actually when it's in soft, it doesn't feel too bumpy. And the roads, we are in New England, the roads aren't good. So this is great for this, handles it well. Zach is questioning whether or not he should have let me drive this. Time to smoke the Dodge Ram. He thinks he can beat us. Hello there. <laughs> you like the truck, man? It's the Rivian, it's electric. It's fast, man. It does zero to 60 in three seconds. Yeah? Well, I'll see you guys later then. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I think. All right, All right. see ya. <laughs> oh, that was perfect. Does it have a launch mode? Yeah, all right, see ya. Oh, we got another red light though. Oh, this guy. Truck. Okay, good. No, next guy. The next, yeah. the next victim. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, you know, aside from goofing off and using this as a toy to just launch with and do acceleration stuff with, as a drivable car, it does really well. This is something that you could easily daily. Again, the ride comfort is great when you have it in soft. You have the different ride heights. It is a great truck to drive all around. It's super comfortable. It's very easy to drive as well. I will say my biggest complaint, I think, about the way this truck drives is the strength of the regen braking. Now I know Zach has Zach has hounded me on how it's great and how one pedal driving is great, and it is really cool. But I do wish there was at least one lower setting so that you could coast a little bit more instead of having this like super abrupt aggressive regen brake every time you take a, take your foot off the pedal. All right, doing another red light launch. Going to get around all these cars with no problem. Ready. Oh, it's so addicting. This is all I would do with a car like this. I would just drive around all day just absolutely smoking everyone out of red lights. So overall, I'm very impressed with the Rivian R1T. I think it is a great truck, just a great vehicle in general. Yes, it has its problems, and yes, it is very expensive, but if you are willing to pay that price and you are willing to wait for this truck, I think you're gonna end up with something that you are going to love driving. Anyways, that wraps it up for this review. I hope you guys found it entertaining and informative. If you liked this video, leave a like and leave some comments down below telling me what you'd like to see me do with the Rivian. I wanna test it out and do some other fun stuff. I would love to take it off-roading and take it, you know, drifting out in the snow once winter comes around. So if you guys would be interested in videos like that, leave comments down below so I can show Zach and be like, hey Zach, the people wanna see these videos. So thank you very much for watching. Subscribe, we'll see you next time. Now let's review.